Hey, Coach, thanks for taking the time today. Gotcha. Excited to be here. Get to get to meet a bunch of new faces. It's awesome. We'll get started here with Mike K and then Dave Zangaro. Hey, Jamal. When you enter a, a new running back room as, as, the, as a position coach, what do you try to establish amongst your players who have had a guy potentially in there for a really long time who has a lot of respect in that room? You know, one of the things that I always do, and it doesn't matter what, where I'm at, what city, what room is, is I just start with their tape. And I truly go through each and every one of their carries, their receptions, their pass blocking. And what I try to come up with is just look at some things of how can I help them get better? And really, that's what I present to each of the players when we meet is, hey, these are some things that I've seen on tape. These are things that I love. I think you do awesome. These are some things that I think I can help you improve on. And I think that's part about NFL players. When they see that you can help them get better, that's what's important. So, you know, earning their respect, earning their trust, and just showing that I have a knowledge of the game. And at the end of the day, I can help them become better players. What do you think that Kenny Gainwell needs to improve upon as he enters the NFL? Well, Kenny a, is a rookie. So Kenny's probably got a whole list of things that we could talk about that he needs to improve on. But he's coming in and he's working, and we've had limited time with him, and he's had a few practices that he's going in there. But I think a lot of times for the rookies, it's just how to be a professional athlete, how to be a pro and understanding what that means on a day-to-day -day basis, whether it's from nutrition to how you work out to how you study to how you take notes. So that's always the foundation that I try to build with those young guys is just really teaching them how to become a professional. Dave and then John McMullen. Hey, Jamal. You have that assistant head coach title uh, as well. What does that mean to you, and, and how does that work in, in practice? You know, really out of the gate with, with a new staff, a, a new position, a new position coach is that really my, my main job right now is, is learning the offense, installing it with our players and getting them ready. You know, and I think part of it is th there'll be things that Nick comes and talks to me about and bounces off of me, whether it's ideas of something he's trying to do or something he wants to do. And I think I, I have a little bit of a varied background, so I've got some, some understanding things of maybe beyond football. But that really, that's it. It's just being a sounding board for him there. But at the the end of the day it's it's making sure that as a running backs coach here that my room and those guys are ready to play when Sunday comes around go ahead John and then Jeff McLean hey Jamal um so can you kind of take us back a little bit and when you got the job uh how how that came about and how you and Nick got together and kind of explain that part of the process you know, it's, I've always said this about, about job opportunities, and I, I think they come around when you do the job you currently have the, to the best of your ability. And I, it's not something I, I haven't been a guy that goes out and looks for jobs. I'm really focused on trying to be the, the best guy or whatever position I'm in at that time. And I think part of the, the reason this opportunity even came up was we did have some crossover. You know, I was with the Colts for two years um, right before actually Nick and the, that crew came in. So there was scouts on staff that were still there that, that knew of me and knew of my work. There was a, actually a, a scout here that was on staff as well. So really the, the information kind of came my way that, hey, the Philadelphia Eagles might be giving you a call. And again, it wasn't something that I was researching and trying to get involved with, but then the opportunity presented itself. And I saw, I did my research too. You know, I knew some guys at the Colts and I called and asked about, about Nick and, you know, some of the other guys that were coming. And just the more information that I got and the, the more, you know, interaction I had with Nick and, and some of the other guys' staff, I was like, you know what, this may be an opportunity that, that I don't want to pass up. And at the end of the day, you know, talk with my wife. We're, we're, we're a partnership in this and asked her, to, is this something that, that maybe we should pursue? And she was all in. So that's really how it came about. Just through, I think, a little bit more about other people that I've worked with that, that spoke highly of me to Nick and, and ended up getting that call. And, and it kind of went from there. Go ahead, Jeff, and then Ed Kratz. <clears throat> Hi, nice to meet you. Um, I'm sure you've watched your share of film about film of Miles Sanders, but now that you've got him, gotten him on grass, what are, you know, what do you assess, uh, what, what is your assessment of his, uh, his abilities? And, you know, he obviously a productive first two years, but what do you think he can do and what you can help him do to kind of take his game to the next level? 
No, I think which is which is always good in this league is with a guy that's you know a few years just only been in it for a few years. I've actually had some time to do some major evaluation of him. You know, he was a guy coming out in the draft that that I actually went to his pro day and worked him out and met with him and watched all his tapes. So I knew a lot of a lot about the young man to be honest with you from his college days and and all that stuff of getting a chance to work with him and meet with him and that. So you know, I had a little bit of understanding of who he was as a player. Like I like I mentioned before. Then I went in and just looked at all the things that he had done while he's been in the NFL. And, and that's part of, you know, helping him become a better player, 1%. And, and really what, what I always find is there's not a whole lot of wholesale things that you're trying to do differently with a player, but it's just being able to identify one little thing. Maybe it's just his toe point on a, a outside zone. Maybe it's just his shoulder level when he's running inside zone and just some of those little things. But I think, I think we all know we've seen flashes that Miles is – has got some good ability to him. I can't wait to to work with him and see him grow even more and get him to hopefully to another level. I think that's that's my job as a coach is to take what he brings to the table and help him improve on those things. Ed and then Paul Domowicz. Hey, Jamal, nice to meet you. Um, I wanted to ask about, we had Aaron Moorhead on earlier today and, you know, he talked about the youth and, you know, the depth of that wide receiver room. I mean, do you see the same thing that when you look at your running back room, Aaron said that guys are going to be fighting their butts off for jobs. Is that a similar situation do you think in your, in your running back room? I think you have to have that. You have to have healthy competition in a room, and I think it really just makes players rise to, to the best they can be. And I do. I do see some competitiveness in a room. I do see some competition. When you look at the, the makeup of our room from Miles to Boston to Jordan to now Carry On to now Kenny Gainwell to Huntley to Elijah, I mean, it's it's a great room for that. I enjoy the room. I enjoy working with the guys or guys that, that want to be pros and want to be the best that they can possibly be. And at the end of the day that that's how you want your roster to be built with guys that are fighting for for a position and know that they have to compete and know that they have to perform so yeah I would agree with that that we're definitely in a position where hey we got some competition going on and, and I think that's good Paul and then Zach Berman yeah hi Jamal a uh, non-eagles question you're a air force grad your dad was an air force sergeant I wanted to get your thoughts on uh the Navy turning down Cameron Kinley's uh, request to uh, delay his commission and, and play in the NFL. Do you have any thoughts on it? Well, I think you, you kind of just said it. I'm an Air Force guy. You know, so so really, what what the naval the navy decided to do? I don't have a whole. I don't know a whole lot of the background of, of kind of some of the things with the navy. I don't know what the the reasonings were for that decision. Um, so to be honest with you, if it if it's more of an air force question, I might have a better answer for you. But for for the navy, I guess they've got to do what's best for them. But not really something that I know a whole lot about. Go ahead, Zach, and then Jimmy Kemsky. Hey, Jamal, nice to meet you. You had uh, Joe Mixon. Uh, two years ago at, at, at 270 plus carries. You've also had backfields where it's kind of been split. What's your approach there? Do you want to have that, that quote unquote featured running back or, or do you want to have a rotation in the backfield? Well, I think it all depends on your room. And I think there are very specific skill sets that you need in your room. You know, you need a first and down, first and second down runner with that really elite ability. You need a guy that can pass protect on third down and be short yardage. You need another a back that can run routes and you can put them out and empty and do those type of things. So it's really a, a combination of that. I think the days of a true, hey, he's an every down back, I th think that word is a little skewed these days because of the speed because of the contact because of it's a tough it's a tough position to play when you look at how many hits you can take in that so your room the way I look at an NFL room has to have all those abilities now how many guys it takes to get those abilities that's where the difference is it could be two guys that you can get all those skill sets that you need could be three guys that you get all those skill sets you need but you've got to have some of those basic things in order to really I think have a good position room and a position group. Now, how that plays out just all depends. You may have two guys that are similar and maybe they split carries. You may have a guy that, hey, he's more capable of doing the pass game stuff and that's kind of what he does. But I think more, more and more each year, you're going to see multiple backfields, multiple people in the backfield because of just the, the toughness of the position and what it requires. Go ahead, Jimmy, and then Nick Fierro. 
Hey, hey, Jamal, um, getting back to Miles for a minute, he was good as a rookie in uh, pass protection and as a receiver. And uh, those are two areas where I think it's probably fair to say he struggled a little bit in his second year. Uh, in the past, he's always been pretty accountable for his shortcomings. Are you seeing that with him this year in those two areas? And what does he have to do to get better on passing downs? You know, and as I mentioned before, kind of when I come into a room and, and look at the things that they do, another thing that I, I also come in is I make sure that each and every player knows they've got a clean slate. You know, I, I, what they've done in the past really doesn't matter to me as much as what they're going to do in the future. So it's more about helping those guys develop and, and not taking any negative things from the past or even positive things. Right? I want us to be in a position where, hey, we build a foundation each and every day of who we're going to be, what type of players we're going to be. And I think for some guys, it, it gives them a little, for, okay, you know what? Last year was last year. And there's a lot of things that I can do this year, things that I can control. We can't control what's happened in the past, but we can definitely help what's going on in the future. So working with him, he, he does. He has a skill set that has a lot of abilities to it. And again, working on each one of those abilities from his route running to his pass catching to his running the football, all those things that really at the end of the day, you're going to work all your backs with. So I'm excited to see you. It's been fun working with him so far. Um, we haven't had a whole lot of time, so there's a lot more things that I, I look forward to working with him on. And we'll get to a point here when we get closer to the season of really knowing, okay, who is Miles in 2021? We have time for a few more here, so we'll go to Nick, Les, and Jeff. Hi, Jamal. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm curious about uh, Jordan Howard and, you know, his progression through it really his career. I mean, he was a one-time starter, a really productive starter. He came to the Eagles pretty good year in 2019 as a, in that backup role, but then when he came back last year, you know, kind of buried on that depth chart, seeing signs that he can get back to the way he was. And, uh, you know, what are your just general impressions of him? You know, again, here's another guy that I evaluated coming out of college, um, was at his pro day, got to meet with him, know, knew his college running back coach very well. So I feel like I kind of have a little bit of a, a relationship with Jordan and understanding that. And same thing, I did see those, those early years in Chicago with what he was able to do. So, again, what has happened in the past couple years, you know, I think for him too, maybe maybe he's got a chip on his shoulder now, which is is awesome, and he should, and come in and say, hey, you know, he can get back to the the ways that he was, because you mentioned it there, he was kind of buried on the depth chart. But I, I like what he brings to the table. I think he came into this camp just ready to work. And, and again, the same thing. What can I help him with? How can he can better? What are the things that he can do? But I like it. He just adds another piece of competition into the room because we've seen it. In the past, he has shown some success. Well, I, I want to see what he does in 2021. Go ahead, Les. Hi, Jamal. Uh, on the Cameron Kinley question that Damo asked a few minutes ago, uh, you got out of the Afro Academy in 99, right? That's when I graduated, yes, sir. Did you, uh, was that an issue for you? Were you looking to postpone your service requirement at all? And what did you do in the Air Force? Um, I'd love to say that it was, but I think my NFL aspirations, you know, were <laughs> a little pushed back there. Like they say, if you can't play, you coach. But uh, but no, that that wasn't something that was even something that I considered. Now, I, I have played with players that have had the ability to get out. Um, actually, I coached a player that played here for a little bit with Chad Hall, who's now the Chad wide receivers Hall. coach with the Buffalo Bills. He's one of the first running backs I coached at Air Force. Um, but no, I mean, that that isn't something that that was there for me or on the table for me that I even thought about. I was going to serve. I did a, multiple things in the, in the military. The interesting was I was supposed to go fly. Um, ended up not liking flying as much as I thought I would, and then actually went into public affairs and did that. And to be honest, was fortunate to get back to the academy while I was still active duty and worked with Fisher DeBerry, who was the head coach that I played for, and ultimately the head coach that gave me my first job in coaching. So uh, interesting career. I did a lot of traveling growing up as a kid um, and then didn't do as much when I was actually in the military myself. But it's, it, was, it was a great run. Uh, and I always said the only reason why I got out the Air Force is because I got my dream job. And that was a chance to coach at my alma mater. And that's, that's really what started this whole journey for me in coaching. And, and do you wish the academies had like a universal policy rather than this guy gets to delay his service, but this guy over here doesn't? And it I seems did, when, chaotic. Uh, to me. Um, 
Well, maybe, maybe if we all put the service academies into one big bubble, but I think you can't, you can't do that. Each okay. service has a very unique mission and job that it has to accomplish. Each service academy are training different individuals for entirely different jobs. So it's, I, I really think that you, you have to have a little bit of that autonomy between the three of them to decide. Now we would all like, hey, well, well they're getting out and they're not. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's just, it's a different thing. And I, I think it's going to take a lot more than just changing each academy. But but I do. I think it's it's important that each each service has a chance to kind of make their rules because they are different. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Last question here from Jeff Mosher, and then we'll get Coach Michael. No, All Jeff. Right. Jeff isn't there. We'll end it now. Thanks for your time, Coach. All right. Hey, thanks, fella. I appreciate you guys talking with me, spending some time.